Dr. Myron Roll joins us now, a former NFL player and current neurosurgery resident and global neurosurgery fellow at Harvard joining us now. So Myron, what was your initial reaction to the hit and the fencing technique on Tua last night when you saw it? Well, thanks for having me. I was uh, quite disturbed like everyone else uh, when I uh, saw that video uh, as a former player and now as a physician in neurosurgery, senior neurosurgery resident. Um, it was disturbing. Uh, you know, when you have a player who gets his head uh, hit to the ground with that force, causing symptoms with this abnormal posturing, uh, you have flexion of the elbows, rigidity, stiffness. Uh, that's a sign of traumatic brain injury. And typically, the classical teaching is it's in the brainstem, which is a very eloquent, important part of our brain that connects our brain to our spine. And so, uh, you know, it was very alarming. Take that all into consideration with what happened last week, where he had some gross uh, motor deficits with not being able to stand on his feet, shaking his head, trying to get the cobwebs out, knowing that he was symptomatic from a head blow. It's very, very troubling. And uh, I was a service like anybody else. You know, Myron, we just had Stefania Bell on our show, who's our injury expert and a, a licensed physical therapist. And she talked about how concussions within the medical community are so incredibly hard to diagnose. She likened it to a black hole for science. When you see what happened on Sunday, what was then described as a back injury, how do you compartmentalize that based on being a player and also what you now know about the brain? Well, you know, I, I think that one, you know, you have a back injury, a spinal cord injury that's also neurologic, and you have some nerves that sort of control the major muscle groups. So uh, there's a chance there. But from what I saw and what we all saw, I wasn't a clinical examiner on the sideline. It wasn't one of those unaffiliated uh, medical professionals. It looked like uh, a, tr a force to the brain causing a mild, moderate, or severe traumatic brain injury, gross motor instability, not able to keep himself uh, up, shaking his head, knowing uh, that something was off and, and wrong there. So, yes, concussions are very difficult to diagnose. They're not radiographically seen on CAT scans. There's some MRIs that show some loss of connectivity between hemispheres, but for the most part, you have to diagnose it off of clinical symptoms, and that's why it has to be managed so delicately from medical professionals who are affiliated with the team and other independent contractors that can provide the most expert analysis with patient safety as the priority. Uh, our colleague Ryan Clark played in the NFL as a defensive back. He tweeted out after he witnessed uh, what happened last night that he had two concussions in a span of three weeks. And that second concussion was the one that really hit him hard. Help us understand what, what it does to the head to have hits like that in a span of four days. It's very troubling when you have a second impact syndrome, another concussion within four days, within 10 days. You know, there was a study, Kevin, from uh, the British uh, Journal of Sports Medicine that compared NCAA college football players 20 years ago, how they were managed with concussions, and five or six years ago. And 20 years ago, you had about 92% of concussions after the first hit happen within 10 days. So that recovery phase, that acute phase, that very delicate time frame, about a week to 10 days, is a time where you really, really need to go slow and be conservative and manage these patients as best as possible. The issue that I see here, honestly, is you have uh, uh, players, you have coaches, you have medical professionals, you have ownership in the front office, all of these competing forces trying to determine if a player should play or not. And then everyone else on the outside looking at saying, what is going on? What is happening? So a lot of voices, a lot of directions in here that's really, really taking away from what should be the priority, which is safety, which is his health outside of football. Let's drop football for a second and let's think of the human. Let's think of the man who can com uh, communicate and be a great member of the community. And that's what needs to be the focus at this point. A big part of doing that and ensuring his health and safety, of course, is making sure that the protocol is tight. So what changes do you think need to happen to the NFL's concussion protocol to prevent these types of incidents? Well, I, I think that, you know, the gross motor instability, the loss of consciousness, uh, any sort of neurological deficit, all of these things need to be uh, strictly adhered to. And I think any sort of outside voice that sort of pressures uh, a decision maker at this point to get a player back on the field based on wanting him to play, based on being competitive, based on, you know, whatever other circumstance that's not related to a patient-centered approach uh, in trying to keep somebody safe and healthy, I think that, you know, ought to be removed. And so, yes, there needs to be independent contractors still. There needs to be other voices uh, that are strictly just for the players. You know, in, in medicine, in, in my field and in neurosurgery and in my hospital in particular, the patients have a driver's seat 
in their management. They are engaged. We ask them for informed consent. We give them our expert recommendation, what we would like to do with their brain and their spine, and they provide feedback if they can or their family does. What I see in the NFL and being in the locker rooms before, it's a lot of conversation driven outside of the players and then decisions made for him to do whatever he needs to do. So we need to make sure the focal point remains the focal point, and that is the player for their health now and into the future outside of football. Myron, as a former player and now a neurosurgeon, we, we appreciate your unique perspective here on this uh, very delicate topic. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.